So we took a look at the power supply, and right next to the power supply is uh, this chip down here, which is an LM380. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about that LM380. Um, I wasn't familiar familiar with that chip, so uh, let's take a look at the data sheet. Okay, the LM380 is a 2.5 watt audio power amplifier. You may be familiar with the LM386. Uh, this is the 380, and this one's much more power. This is two and a half watts. Uh, now it comes in either a 14 pin or an 8 pin. The 8 pin doesn't have as much dissipation, a thermal dissipation, and so uh, this chip is made to be thermal. You can see uh, there's pins uh, 3, 4, 5, and 10, 11, 12 are ground, and those are there to pull heat out. So when they're soldered to a big ground plane, just like that regulator was on a ground plane, this is now on a ground plane also, and it sucks the heat away from this part. Um, so, yeah, otherwise it's very similar to a, a 386, which probably came later. This is a high voltage part, though. This is a, uh, uh, requires 10 volts to 22 volts. If you have more than 22 volts, there is an LM384, which is the same part, but they select it for a higher voltage uh, rating. So it's tested at a higher voltage. Um, now the 386 is a low voltage part. You can take the 386 part, the LM386, down to four volts or five volts. And so that's why most people I think are using that. It, 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 why it became popular is it's a low voltage part. But this one seems to be higher voltage and more watts. Uh, I would think this would be much better for driving a real speaker in a, in a product. So yeah, it looks, it looks pretty nice. Let's, let's see how it's used in the part. So here's our 380, and uh, it will look very similar to a 386 setup that you see. Power comes in, um, and there is a uh, little high frequency filter on the output, um, and then it's capacitively coupled to the outside world, um, and then inputs ground, rest, uh, ground referred. Now the one thing interesting about it is that this part can be switched on and off uh, with this uh, transistor here. And so this transistor is used to mute the system. When you're transmitting, you don't want to have the speaker active. And so that's what this transistor does. It runs over to a signal which is uh, transmit. So when you're transmitting, it turns, it turns off this, uh, it turns off this, well here it is right here. So here's the transmission. Uh, let's see here. Transmission comes in. Well, that turns it on. Hmm, turns it on. Why would that work that way? Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. You should be turning this thing off. Oh, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, this is not the ground pin. Pin 7 is the ground pin. So this thing's always always uh, um, activated. So plus 12 comes in here, and then pin 7 is ground, and it runs here. So pin 1 is a um, uh, some type of mute function on the part. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here's the simplified schematic, maybe even not so simplified schematic of the of the internals. And here's pin one. Um, so we have a uh, an input. This is the plus and minus input. Looks like the input of a uh, op amp. And then this is just a, a totem pole driver, which is the output. And uh, there's a thing here called bypass one. So when you reach in here and you ground this it disables the input, it, it won't hear anything, so it, it, mutes, it mutes the part. So that's how it's used. So when you're transmitting, this uh, voltage appears, turns on this transistor, that transistor then pulls down on pin one to ground, and then it, it mutes. Uh, the, uh, the input goes through a potentiometer and that acts as the volume. It squelch with some other circuits not used in this circuit right here, but that's, uh, yeah, that's how the, how the LM380 is used in here. 380 is a, a new chip to me. I hadn't I hadn't really uh, thought of it much, and uh, might be might be interesting.